Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Team of the Year has caused an absolute madness on FC24 with the Team of the Year attackers and icons in packs, the double SBC player drop that we had yesterday with one Team of the Year icon and a flashback, as well as the craziest gameplay glitches I've ever seen. Yesterday was a wild start to Team of the Year, but what's getting the most exciting is the fact that these Team of the Year attackers look semi-packable, and that gives us hope for the rest of Team of the Year. We're going to talk about that because the way their prices are looking on this market and the supply that there is for these icons and attackers, there might be hope for next week as we grind a lot of upgrade packs in this game. So if you're excited for the video and if you're excited for Team of the Year finally being here, drop a thumbs up on the video and of course, subscribe if you're new. Let's start with yesterday's content and really let's start with the glitches, the gameplay glitches that basically everybody was running into yesterday in squad battles, in foot champs, in rivals, whatever game mode you were playing, there were problems either getting kicked out of the game or seeing some of the wildest player animations I've ever seen happen in Ultimate Team before. If you haven't watched the Nepenthes video of his crazy penalty shootout, make sure you go to his Twitter and check that out. It was an absolutely mental thing. I've never seen it before. It was wild. It's hilarious what was happening. But EA told us if you're having an issue, turn it off and turn it back on and then tell us when this happens so we can try to fix it. Now, thankfully, a couple hours ago, one of the EA employees tweeted out and said, hey, we think we fixed the issue. Some changes were made. And if you're going to get back into the game, make sure you completely uh, shut down the app, close the app, and then open it up now. So it should be updated and there shouldn't be any problems. But that was causing people a lot of issues yesterday. I was trying to get into some champs games and right away when you would log in, it would just kick you out, right? And then, of course, the squad battle glitches, which were even more crazy. So that was one thing that went on yesterday and now it's the whole gameplay situation. Also, the servers went down yesterday for about 30 minutes after the team of the year dropped at content drop time because there were so many people trying to get on the game. It was absolutely mental. That hasn't happened in a while, but again, team of the year, big day. So that stuff does happen sometimes. At least it wasn't down for super long. Now also, really quick, this doesn't have to do with glitches or servers or anything, but EA did post yesterday on Twitter the full team of the year. You've got ratings, official dynamic images, and everything. I guess the leaked ratings that we saw before did not include official dynamic images because that is a different dynamic for Rodri, Jude, and Kevin De Bruyne than what we had originally seen before in some of those leak posts. So these are the official dynamics and overall ratings for the team of the year cards. That is on EA's Twitter if you want to take a look at that. Now, let's get into the content that actually dropped yesterday inside of the game. We're going to go to Evolutions first because, yeah, we had a new Evo, but it's probably one of the least hype parts of the game that was dropped yesterday. The Team of the Year Striker Prospect Evolution. This is the Striker Evo that was leaked a couple of days ago that we never got requirements for. Overall, max 85, pace max 89, shooting, dribbling, physical requirements as well. And the whole point is you're upgrading a player to be a target for headers, right? You get the power header plus play style plus, and you get a big boost to shooting and strength and heading accuracy as a part of the card. Really, this is an Evo that seems very tailored for a specific group of cards. Like you need to be putting somebody in this Evo that is going to end up being really good at headers, right? Some of the opportunities you have to upgrade cards and some of the options here for players that fit this Evo are not going to be very good at headers. Like Diogo Jota, would you really want to put him into this Evo to get header goals and get power header plus for him. Not necessarily, at least in my opinion. Maybe De Jong, that's a player you want to get in. Maybe Nicholas Jackson, right? Or Garassi. Like some of these players, maybe even Lukaku as well, fit this Evo. But I think a lot of people, as you can tell, the upvote, downvote on Footbin for these Evos is not that crazy. It's like 17% upvoted. There are some cool cards that you can make from this, but honestly, it's just a really specific card that you're going after. The fact that it's free is nice, so we can't complain too much. And how much work is it? Play four, win two, win three, and then win three. So it's not that many games. Um, and you do get a playstyle plus at the end, which is cool. It's just, um, it's different, right? And that is a Evo that we thought uh, we didn't even really have leaks for besides we knew a striker Evo was coming. We'll, we'll have more Evo opportunities today on this game, but it starts with a bit of an L Evo, I guess, or a mid Evo to begin the team of the year promo. Now we have a lot more content to get through. So let's keep going through it. Let's go to the objective section where we have a objective, which actually I just remembered. We had this last year as well. We had a 2022 year in review during team of the year. Remember that Doan card 
and the Emmy Martinez Team of the Year honorable mentions. This year, we're starting off with a three-part year-in-review completionist set, which the first one dropped yesterday with Xhaka. We'll look at the card in a second. But then if you're wondering when the next two will be released, January 26th and January 30th. So we're not going to be able to work on this completionist objective until January 30th. It's going to be a while until we're able to get that done. I would imagine they're dropping two more player cards just like we had this Xhaka yesterday. This is a cool card. I know he's 3-3 and medium-medium, which I don't like. But he's got incisive pass plus, really good play styles, and he got a massive pace upgrade. Leverkusen links, 93 passing as well with 99 shot power, 98 short, 96 long pass. That is a really crazy card. 99 aggression, of course, as well. That's a nice objective card, at least for, or at the very least, for 90 rated fodder. You do have to get a certain number of goals and play a certain number of games to get this. It's not that difficult to do. It does take a little bit of work with some very specific um, requirements there for how you have to score the goals and such. But that was our objective that was dropped yesterday. It is a nice card if you want to go out and grind that. And uh, yeah, that was decent. Now, SBCs. That's where it's popping off, guys. What we were surprised to see in SBCs yesterday is not one, but two player SBCs and the exchange SBCs, which we have to talk about. First of all, we've got Bruno Fernandez, right? We always get a flashback. I mentioned that in yesterday's video. Bruno Fernandez is our first flashback SBC that we got. They changed his play style plus, which some people are not a huge fan of, but they upgraded his weak foot, gave him a pretty nice pace boost and a pretty nice defensive boost as well. This flashback Bruno is, I don't know if it's says in the description here yeah it says his inclusion into 21 team of the year now his dynamic images of him at sporting like real young bruno before he transferred to united but this is commemorating his team of the year in 2021 which was absolutely phenomenal and a crazy crazy card 99 stamina this looks like a really good box to box he's got great play styles um long ball pass i think i would have rather had incisive pass plus but long ball pass is still good intercept anticipate trivella relentless like this is a really really solid card guys and it's not that cheap it is six squads it's a little bit higher rated of squads too 288s 287s and 286s uh, with a couple of informs in there as well or maybe just one inform requirement coming in at 832,000 coins but since it's Bruno Fernandez with the Prem links and albeit he's gonna be good in game I, I think I mean I don't I haven't watched any reviews and this isn't a card that maybe I would do straight away um, personally for my team but I think this card, I mean, look at the upvote, downvote, man. And then look at the actual SBC itself on Footbin. It is upvoted very heavily. I went past it. Where's Bruno Fernandez? Bruno Fernandez, upvote, downvote. Is he not in here? Oh, there he is. I went past him twice. 67% upvoted. So people are really excited for this Bruno. And it's one that you'll definitely be able to craft. It won't take that much work while you're opening Team of the Year upgrade packs, especially in this next week. He will be craftable. But the SBC that was the real surprise was a team of the year icon, George Best. And it was a surprise because, number one, we didn't expect two player species in the same day, and neither did we expect a five-star skill move boost on George Best. And the first card that is available to everybody via SBCs with two playstyle pluses, I think those are the two things that are making this card really get a ton of hype. A high-medium work rate change as well, the skill move, the work rates, uh, all the positions that he can play technical plus um there's a lot of praise for this card in game he only has five play styles but two of them are play style pluses once again and people really seem to get really hyped for this george best card obviously a very popular icon for me the sbc is at a price that is decent because if i look at ribery and where he's priced on the market and i think where this george best would be priced i don't think that 1.8 mil is that bad i think it's the surprise of a george best team of the year icon with a dynamic image with two play style pluses and the five star skills that is what is making people want to go and do this SBC. i'm sure he's a really insane card and i might end up even crafting him myself but this is the SBC combined with bruno it's creating a lot of hype for fodder making some prices move but it's also creating some prices going down because people are selling and there was more content yesterday than we were expecting especially with sbcs as a lot of people are doing this card it's like number one on footbin almost all the time well actually it's not right now i digress but this best card uh, actually the sbc was a lot cheaper when the lightning rounds were going on he was as cheap as 1.6 mil he's making fodder go up himself um and there's a couple other reasons too which we'll talk about that but that is a really good sbc and once again craftable during the team of the year upgrade packs period it's out for 60 days right i think 60 days it's out for so you got a long 
time to get that done. So two massive player SBCs yesterday that people are very, very excited for. And then, of course, a bunch of upgrade packs as well. We have an 83 times 10. We have an 84 plus times 5. Uh, and then we have an 81 double. The player pick came back for the team of the weeks. And we also have an 85 plus player pick, which you can only do once a day. I was a little bit disappointed in that. I was hoping for like two or three times a day, but it's only one time a day. But the 8310 and the 845 are three times a day. And that is going to be consistent demand for the low tier of fodder, which isn't up at all. But it is in demand. And also there's inform requirements in that 8310 and actually maybe in the 84 times five as well. Yeah, there's an inform requirement there too. So informs are in demand, but they're not really up that much. They were up at 31,000 coins before content and they've actually dropped back down a little bit since then. Let's get a live look in on informs. Uh, we'll talk about fodder a little bit more, of course, because I think there are some opportunities with it. Informs were 26K earlier. Looks like they are still around 25 to 26,000 coins at the moment. And again, the team of the week player pick is cheaper than 26K because 82s and 83s are so cheap. The team of the week player pick is 19,000 coins. So I would do that if you need to get some informs for SBCs in this game. Let's talk about the other SBCs that were a crazy surprise. The exchange SBCs. Like, this is crazy. And guys, there's actual value here. I want to talk you guys through this because what this is, is kind of what the reason they drop these packs for and these SBCs for, in my opinion, is two things. The first one is these are good for when you have a duplicate, right? Let's say you get a duplicate 85 to 89 rated. You can then put it into this SBC. And if your club is running out of players, it's almost like an automatic club restock, especially if you get a high rated 89 overall. You get a 51 players pack, which includes 14 rares. You could pack a team of the year out of that. And at the same time, you're sending a bunch of non-rares and rares into your club that you can then rinse back into SBCs. But some people might be like, Nate, I need 89 rated for SBCs. Well, it's just another option that you have. But also what this is nice for is like I put an 85 rated into my club because I had some of that and I had an 85, but I didn't have like an 82 or an 83. And I packed an 83 out of the seven players pack that you get from this. These are really, really intriguing, really intriguing. Sometimes you just need to get rid of a duplicate card, especially when you don't have any quick sell recoveries left, which is a lot of the crafting might run you out of quick sell recoveries during team of the year. So these are nice for dad. And really, are they good values? The question, should you be doing these? It feels weird to put an 89 rated card in, but when you get 51 players back, it makes you think, guys, we've done a little bit of calculating with this. Um, the pack value that you get back from this pack right here, you're getting about 41, 42,000 coins worth of the non-rare golds and the rare golds back from this pack. What are 89 rated right now in this market? 35K. I know you're spending 35,000 coins to buy one of those to put it into this, uh, this pack here, but it's kind of a decision you're going to have to make through trying it out and what your club needs. But I think some people, and that's part of the reason why fodder is, has bounced back up in price so well as it has. I think people are starting to buy those fodder cards to put them into these packs because you get so many players back. Now, I have not done one of them yet. I'd be very interested to try them. They're out for the entirety of team of the year. That is going to be very helpful for crafting later on down the line. Um, and yeah, it seems crazy to put an 89 or an 88 rated player into this. But like, guys, I think there's actually some reason to do so. So we're going to have to test those out and see how it works. But like, look at fodder, guys. Like, it was very low during the lightning rounds. And now it's starting to come back up. I think it's a combination of the two-player SBCs that we have that are insane. And also people opening packs, right? Tons of supply. We're going to talk about all the way down to 16K for 88s. And now they're back to the same price and even higher than what they were before content yesterday. People have started opening packs. They have coins. And they're going and doing the icon SBCs the player SBCs, but they're also doing these exchange SBCs too. So it's a really interesting scenario with these. And uh, I'm down to try them out. The 89 overall one seems crazy. But then again, you're giving up a high rated fodder card that could go into a player SBC. So it's just something different that we're gonna have to try out because that's something that we did not expect to see. Now let's talk about packs a little bit. Let's talk about supply since we're kind of on the topic. They're running the crazy lightning rounds. They're running the crazy packs. There are lightning rounds that are out at almost all times of the day. Right now, we've got an 81 times 100 untradeable, a super 86 plus pack. But the pack yesterday that really supplied the cards a lot early on was a, I think it was like a times, 
I, I don't know how many players were in it, but it was a times something attackers pack. And there was all attackers. It was a 400k pack. It was tradable. That's kind of like, remember how the 84 times 10 supplied stuff really crazy the last couple of weeks, which they still might drop an 84 times 10. But it was that pack yesterday that I think it was times 15 or maybe it was times 50 attackers pack. It was crazy um, how many attackers were in that pack. It supplied that part of the market and especially the team of the years really, really well. They also dropped the 700k pack yesterday, which if you look at the pack odds in here, and guys, this is this is the real hype for team of the year. Yeah, the content's good, but with the team of the year cards, their prices, and look at these numbers. We have six team of the year cards in packs, just the attackers, and this 700k pack gives you a 4.7% chance of packing them. I know it's a crazy pack, but there's only six cards in packs. Add the other 18 when you think about the men's and women's 12th vote whenever that is out. We'll have a total of 24 team of the year cards in packs. What is that percent going to be then from a 700k pack? Is it going to be like 15%? That's going to be crazy. The odds of packing a team of the year look way better. And guys, it seems like they might actually be packable this year, right? And I'm not just going off of the numbers in the store because those can be misleading. But what I'm also going off of is... The amount of supply on the market I'm seeing for not only some of the actual team of the year cards, but for the icons as well. Guys, these cards yesterday, there were 26 or 27 pages of team of the year Sam Kerr on the market in the first hour yesterday after these cards were dropped. And yes, there are some of these that are cheaper than others, right? Sophia Smith and Sam Kerr are the cheapest two team of the year cards, and they look cracked. When Sophia Smith went onto the market and I saw her max price was, ooh, that's an undercut right there, 1.43. When I saw her max price was 2.9 mil, I was surprised. I knew right then that these cards were going to end up being a little bit cheaper, and they have maintained that. Now, of course, you got really expensive team of the years, right? These are the two cheap ones, right? You've got Hanson, who's 6 mil. You've got Messi, who's 8. Holland is 4 and 5 mil now. And then Mbappe is 15. So, yes, these cards are expensive. There is no doubt about that. But the fact that the women's cards and some of the icons, you've got Zola 600K, Javi 700K. He was under 600K before. These cards have really rebounded. Ribery was 2.5. Uh, Czech was 360K. He's now up 100,000 coins, right? We've had big rises since that crazy supply early on. But that just tells me that these cards are actually packable. And that's the real reason to be excited going forward during Team of the Year because last year we talked about it for so long how the pack weight just was terrible on all of these cards, and it did not make us want to open packs for Team of the Year, and it made Team of the Year really a drag, right? We had good SBCs, and we had good content, and we were excited for that, but it was like we're opening packs, and there was like no point to opening those packs because it just seemed like it was so hard to pack Team of the Years. And based off of also how many Team of the Years I'm seeing popping up on my X twitter timeline, guys, it really makes me excited for doing upgrade packs the next two weeks in this game. Even just opening a couple packs here or there, like it feels like there's actual potential to pack one of these, albeit it's gonna be hard. But if you try, if you've got a lot of packs saved, I would get excited because this looks way better than last year based off of the supply on the market. Now, of course, these cards are pretty cheap. I think that is due to the supply, but I also just think that maybe the women's team of the year cards um, are gonna end up being a little bit more packable. I mean, look at Sam Kerr and look at Sophia Smith, 1.4 mil for a first day team of the year card, especially with these stats. I know everybody looks at the 80 composure on Sophia Smith and says, oh my goodness, Nate, this card's terrible. Compare this card to Golden Mbappe and tell me that it's terrible. This is going to be one of the better attackers in the game, and it's only 1.4 mil. This could be a card that ends up rising up a lot in the next couple of days. Or, of course, with the supply being different this year, it could drop down a little bit too. I don't even know where these cards are going to go, man. They're going to be all over the place. Of course, these attackers are only in packs for the next um, two days. Uh, well, less than two days now. They're only in packs for two days total. So they could rise up a little bit before they all come into packs next Thursday. Uh, but be careful with these cards today. They will fluctuate, but a lot of people want to try them. And there is so much hype for all the Team of the Year cards. We saw their prices move a ton yesterday. So people were buying them, selling them, and wanting to go and try them out in the game. And maybe with the gameplay fixed today, they could even go up a little bit. Because I do believe that we saw the most amount of supply as we looked at that fodder graph right on pop and her graph went down a bunch of content that's how these cards graphs look as well they were low about an hour to two hours after the content drop and then really went up in price as they started to get rare and as people started to go buy them so 
just crazy, right? And then the cards themselves, W stat boost. Like, look at Javi for 700,000 coins. This looks like a card that is actually worth 700k as well. From his base icon, you get not only one, but two playstyle pluses, technical long ball pass, 97 passing, plus five, six, and seven in all the different stat categories on his card. They did a great job of upgrading these. This Zola makes me not want to do the icon Evo for Zola anymore because that card looks irrelevant compared to this 91 with dead ball and finesse, 600k for him. The Vieira boost is insane. Uh, the check boost, I will say this. Some people are asking, why is there no playstyle plus on the goalkeeper upgrade here. Um, I think it actually has been confirmed and even said by EA somewhere, I missed it, but a couple people were talking about this, that goalkeepers will not receive any playstyle pluses through the entire year, uh, except for in like pro clubs or something. So in ultimate team, at least, I don't think we can expect that uh, like I was starting to and we talked about earlier, but that's not the case. Other icon goalkeepers are down bad. Like if you take a look at Sh uh, Schmeichel, I think, du not Dudek, um, Vander Sar, yes, Vander Sar is who I'm thinking of, and the other icon goalkeeper that's a Thunderstruck is Casillas. He is down a lot because of this check dropping on the game yesterday. People love icon goalies, and I think check has the headwear in game, so that's pretty sick. So I like the cards. I think the team of the year icons are great, and I again, I'm excited for the pack weight, but not to belabor the point there, let's talk about the market because since content was so good with the SBCs and since the cards were like actually kind of affordable like when you have two team of the years on the market that are less than two million coins that makes a lot of people able to afford them and then when you throw in four icons that are less than three million coins especially with zola and javi being as cheap as they were the market yesterday didn't just immediately fly with the coin injection because there was so much good content there was actually some panic selling uh you know card prices that were really high heading into the content drop yesterday on friday actually took a little bit of a drop but a lot of them are starting to rebound now it was kind of just like the shock of content created a market that was very uncertain and now you have prices that are starting to go up some are still low like this tevez and this wesley snyder still 1.1 mil i believe yeah 1.12 that's still really low for him but i've gotten some really good sales i didn't buy any team of the year cards yesterday i was all in on out of pack specials this ribbery guys like i made over 200,000 coins on company and this Paulo Futre alone yesterday. And we've made really good coins, probably upwards of like 400,000 coins. Like this Ribery was a 60K flip. Um, this Viali was another, I think, 30,000, 20,000 coins. Um, this Sun, I bought for 305. Still have a couple other ones. I bought this for 505. So we've had some really good flips. And I still have some other cards, like a 91 Salah that I bought for 411 just a bit ago. Like that's a really, really low price for him. I'm really looking at the rest of the market right now and saying, okay, content's probably going to slow down a little bit now especially after yesterday's madness we're going to get content today but i think it slowed down a little bit and that's going to create opportunity wait this salah just sold for 485 and i bought one for 411 we're balling right i think there's opportunity for some of these cards that have come down like this hansen was one million coins and now she's back on her 900k but her team of the year cards seven mil this is a card that is still almost guaranteed to go up. If you want to buy it for your team, I still think there's great opportunity here to buy these cards. And even for a short-term flip, the market is very healthy with a lot more coins on it. That's the one thing to keep in mind going forward is that there's a lot of coins in this market and people are buying cards. Stick to the out of packs, stick to the rare. And if you bought a card for your team on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday even, you probably still paid for most cards in this market a lower price than what they are now. Um, I'm looking through a lot of these cards that are panic sold per se, and they didn't even go down lower than what they were earlier in the week. Like, look at Kaka. He's 950K. Look at this one that I was looking at from um, Thursday even. He was 837,000 coins. So the market's a mixed bag, but it is starting to go up a lot as you're seeing cards get rare and people have coins, and that is a good thing. Now, we talked about fodder at length already, but I do want to look at fodder just one more time and talk about it again because with all of the demand that is out there, and yeah, you're going to have more lightning rounds today. I think fodder is probably going to rise up a little bit in the morning and then maybe drop after content. It might be... Remember, this happens a couple times a year where we have a lot of lightning rounds, but a lot of demand at the same time. If you start to see fodder fluctuations, like fodder has come back up from where it was yesterday, right? Like 86s or 7.5K. And yesterday after content, they were all the way down at 6,700 coins. If we get all those same lightning rounds again today on Saturday, which we probably will, or at least some 
um, release of a lot of lightning rounds, maybe not the exact same ones. If fodder drops down to where it was or even close to where it was, like if 88s go back to like 17K and you can get them on bid even for 17K and they're like at 19K, get on bids today with supply because these cards are going to keep fluctuating with all the demand that is out there. It might be one of those promos where you can buy fodder every day, like an hour or two after content and then sell it the next day right before content or in the middle of the day and make yourself one, two, 3,000 coins a card, maybe even more than that on the higher tier. Goodness, 90 rated cards were 48,000 coins yesterday, and now they're 55, 56K. These cards are in packs. Look at this, man. 48K, zoom, all the way up to 55. The, the fodder is in very high demand, and there's a lot of coins, and that's another testament to it. So if you're going to be trading actively on this market, out of pack special cards, um, maybe you'll be careful with center mids. Some center mids haven't rebounded as well, especially if we do get more flashback SBCs in that position, which we still have leaks for. We'll talk about that in a second. But I think the market's very healthy, and it's going to continue to slowly rise. Um, and of course, links to popular players, the more rare cards will continue to rise up more in the next couple of days. Let's talk about today before we start blabbering too much uh, on this video. Uh, we have a couple of flashback SBCs. We have a new one that we didn't talk about in yesterday's video, Alfonso Davies. So we have a defender flashback. Now we have a striker, Alex Morgan, who we didn't get yesterday, although it would make sense with attackers, right? We've got a Conte still, and now we have an Alfonso Davies. Guys, again, these SBCs probably are not going to be released the next four days or the next three days that we have left, right? These are going to be spread out during team of the year. But usually on Saturdays of a promo, it is an SBC type of day. I don't know if we're going to get a Davies. I don't know if we're going to get Conte or Alex Morgan today or Sawa, right? So we have multiple player SBCs that are leaked right now. We could get something completely different. We might not get a player SBC at all. I'm not entirely sure. But last year on Saturday was our team of the year icon SBC for Hugo Sanchez. But we already have George Best, so that's obviously not what's going to be happening today. I'm really curious to find out what happens. It might be a day where they try to chill out on the SBC content for a day, maybe, and instead go in for the Evo content. We still have those two center defensive mid and center mid Evos that are leaked. And one great thing you could do on the market right now is potentially look through some of those gold cards that were up and inflated in price earlier in the week for Evolutions like Schloop, right? Remember on, was it Wednesday or Thursday when this was leaked? Schloop on Thursday was 2,000 coins. Even yesterday, he was um, inflated above 1,000 coins heading into content, and now he's 950. You can probably get him on bid for cheap, right? Because he was a card that was really inflated for the upcoming um, evolutions that were leaked. Where is Belgarde? Because he's another one. Yes, Belgarde on the market. That's the one that's extinct. This one's on the market right here. He went crazy on Thursday, right, for these leaked Evos. He was up at like three to 4,000 coins. Yesterday, he was also about 2.5K right before content, 1.7, and he's dropped off since then down to like 900. Maybe you try to pick up a couple of those on bid. Again, be careful. You don't want to trade with those too crazily because there are bans that get handed out if those cards go to max price. But I do believe we'll get one of the two Evos today. And again, just to show you those again, those are the Team of the Year Visionary Evo, which is a center defensive mid Evo. And then also the Team of the Year Unsung Hero, which are both paid evolutions, which means they're a little bit better. Those big upgrades there, you can see, those are some pretty solid upgrades. Um, but I think it be, might, be, might be a little bit of a better Evo day today on Saturday in this game. And then maybe another upgrade pack SBC. I know it seems crazy because we have so many. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was another upgrade pack SBC as well that was released of some sort. I know we have the hero pick that is out. Guys, they could even drop an icon pack today. Um, so watch the leaks. There might be stuff happening before content. The daily bronze and silver are going away as well. It's something to keep in mind because those are very, very handy uh, on this game as well. And for the market today, team of the years, uh, if you're wanting to try one of them out, I would probably wait to buy until we get closer to content. I know that we were just looking at um, Sophia Smith and Sam Kerr, and they both look a lot rarer right now on the market than they did before. I think Sophia Smith has the most hype out of these two players, um, the most affordable team of the years for sure. Uh, but Sam Kerr has got a lot of hype as well. If Sophia Smith is ending up around uh, 1.4 mil, 1.4, I'd have to get a snipe for me to want to buy this card to try to sell it into tomorrow. There's so much hype for this item. It's crazy, guys. But again, the supply is also a lot different from what we've seen in years past. So it'll be interesting to follow these cards over the next couple days, and we will follow them very 
closely on this game with the daily videos and everything else going on. I opened a couple of packs yesterday just to quickly update. I packed Neymar out of my um, attacker packs. No team of the years yet for me. We're going to get a team of the year counted sorted here pretty soon. Um, my midfielder packs are ready for tomorrow and Sunday. We'll open those and see if we get lucky. And then the rest of this stuff, guys, are just packs that we will be waiting on until we get the full team in packs next Thursday and then more cards in packs next Friday. Um, also, something to note, the icons are in packs for three more days. So they will be in packs until, what's the math there, four days in total. They will be in packs until Tuesday. So kind of like the same schedule. Um, I think that's right. The same schedule as the Versus promo um, that was a couple of weeks ago. So these cards will be in packs and then they'll go out of packs. Then they might return at the very end. We'll see how EA do it with these team of the year icons. But that's enough yapping from me. Hopefully you guys got uh, lucky with the packs yesterday. If you packed a team of the year, tweet me, please, man. My uh, X, my Twitter is down below in the description. I want to see those. I've been tweeted so many times already today. It's crazy. Uh, just, again, another testament to that legit. The packs seem to be giving out somewhat better weight of team of the years this year in this game. And I'm excited to rip player picks and grind the menus the next couple weeks. So if you're excited as well, drop a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe if you're new. See you guys in the video tomorrow. It's been Nate for the count. Catch you guys there. Peace. Out.